And it is the 12th day of January 2022. Good morning and welcome to the first edition of this new year. Happy new year. We have got very good resolutions for the show this year to make it even more better and more personal so that we can reach you wherever you are. My name is Ben Troy Njue. Thank you so much for making time. And in the next two hours, we'll be discussing a lot of issues that are affecting the country. But first things first, the first hour we'll discuss matters, security. And the second hour, we will look at the politics of the day and the week and the month. As it is generally, of course, the political drum beats are are slowly but surely gaining pace but in case you just joined us this is kbc news check thank you so much for making time and as i has as i had alluded to Ari earlier is that we are splitting these two hours first we're talking about matter security and terrorism then the second hour you're going to be discussing matters uh, politics and this will fall squarely uh, on peaceful elections uh, in that second hour well in the next three days, uh, the country is going to be commemorating exactly three years since uh, the Dusit D2 terror attack uh, along Riverside Drive that left over 20 people dead and Al-Shabaab militias that did come out and talk about that they were responsible for that terror attack. What are some of the lessons that we have picked from there? And... Um, with all fairness, we have enjoyed relative calm, and especially in the capital city. Yes, of course, we have uh, some of the issues on our borders, and especially because of uh, Somalia and, uh, and the Al-Shabaab militias. But at least we have enjoyed relative calm. What are some of the things that we are doing right? What are some of the things that we need to do? You do remember the head of state, President Uhuru Kenyatta, did say that security starts with you. And my guest on this hour, he is a senior superintendent of police and also the principal liaison officer at the National Counterterrorism Center, Kilu Masisi. Have I got to that? Yes. Karibu sana. Thank thanks you so for, much. for making time and being my first guest. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me here. Yes. Uh, Happy New Year, viewers. Uh, good morning. So, yes. Thank you. Uh, you are a senior superintendent of po police and also you also wear another hat when it comes to matters counterterrorism, can you yes. tell us a, a brief of what you do? Uh, I work for the National Counterterrorism Center. Uh, the National Counterterrorism Center is a multi agency instrument mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, comprised majorly of uh, uh, security agencies from government uh, MDAs. Mm -hmm. So at the National Counterterrorism Center, you will find we have the police, we have uh, members from the intelligence, mm -hmm. we have the KDF. We have immigration, we have Minister of Foreign Affairs, we have Ngao, mm -hmm. uh, so we have the prison department, we have the KWS, so it's a conglomerate of uh, government agencies who deal with security, mm -hmm. and the purpose of having that is to have coordinated efforts uh, among the security agencies. Mm -hmm. So as a police officer, I'm seconded there, mm -hmm. and I'm the principal liaison officer. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the NCTC, as those who will not know what NCTC does, mm -hmm. uh, NCTC coordinates uh, counterterrorism efforts across Kenya. NCTC sensitizes and creates awareness uh, uh, across Kenya. NCTC also capacity builds uh, enforcement agencies on matters of counterterrorism. Mm -hmm. And also NCTC uh, in liaison uh, with other agencies, they do certification uh, for aviation schools. As okay. we know, uh, the plane has been used as a terrorist uh, weapon. Yes. So it is good that we vet these schools so that you can know their intention, who comes there, who are the pilots, who are the students in those schools, so that we can have a secure, uh, uh, safer space mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for the aviation. Okay. Yes. And three years down the line, what lessons have we picked up from the Dusit D2 attack? Uh, I remember government agencies were on the receiving end because it was alleged that uh, the U.S. had issued some some sort of a warning uh, yes. that uh, the Al Shabaab militias were planning an attack on somewhere that is frequented by by tourists and uh, people from 
from from other countries yes what lessons have we been able to pick up since the Ducit D2? Of course, a very unfortunate event, but we may have picked two or three things that uh, we can use to ensure that that does not happen again. Yes, we, we have lessons learned. Um, uh, the attack was very unfortunate, although the, we know our security agencies are very resilient uh, in matters uh, countering terrorism. Uh, so in the last three years, uh, maybe we can go up to what happened in Westgate, issues mm -hmm. of coordination. Yes. And we see there's an improvement of, of coordination True. in the enforcement agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, we see there's an improvement of awareness. Because in this awareness, we also tell uh, the larger society what to do in case of a of a terrorist attack mm -hmm. and you see in Ducid, mm -hmm. uh you could see what the civilians did mm -hmm. and then you could see also what the enforcement agencies did mm -hmm. you could see the first responders how they reacted mm -hmm. and those who came in after the first responders how how they acted mm -hmm. so we have learned that it is good that we bring the larger society and we are calling it a whole of government a whole of society approach mm -hmm. so that we face uh, issues of security wholesomely mm -hmm. uh, as 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 the whole of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you know, matter security are kind of um, uh, a lot of secrets uh, involved, uh, so that uh, we, we know, of course, you can be able to prepare well. Uh, but uh, what are some of the efforts that have been done since the Ducit D2 attack uh, that uh, guarantees? us or me as a Kenyan that I'm, I'm safe uh, within the borders against any terrorist attacks? Yeah, of course, uh, uh, you'll find that there is no secret. Mm -hmm. uh, you just say that uh, there are warnings mm -hmm. or advisories given by our friendly countries mm -hmm. on their citizens who are in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So number one, that is not a secret. Mm -hmm. So when they give these early warnings, uh, we always analyze what is the threat level, what is the situation on the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have different uh, parts of Kenya. So we will say a certain part of Kenya is quite safe, mm -hmm. a certain part of Kenya is volatile, a certain part of Kenya is vulnerable, but uh, as enforcement agencies, there is what we are doing to, mm -hmm. to ensure that the safety and that people in Kenya feel safe. Mm -hmm. So there are enhanced uh, capacity building for enforcement agencies mm -hmm. who are the first responders, who are our frontline officers in these vulnerable situations, situations mm -hmm. where an attack happens and they are the first ones to run towards the attack as opposed to running uh, the opposite direction of mm -hmm. the attack. So uh, there is a big plus for, for, for our enforcement agencies mm -hmm. who actually respond fast to this uh, to these incidents. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, we have done a lot for the society. Uh, there is what we call the county action plans. Mm -hmm. The county action plans are driven by the governors and the county commissioners, mm -hmm. uh, where the governor is the chair and the county commissioner is the co-chair. Mm -hmm. uh, in that forum, there is what we call the county engagement forum, mm -hmm. which is comprised of many uh, people from that county from the business sector education sector security sector who come together to put their brains together and see how they can build resilience in matters countering terrorism and also mm -hmm. countering violent extremism mm -hmm. especially matters of radicalization and recruitment to these terror groups mm -hmm. yes and talking about fast responding looking at Ducit D2 there were already um, some warnings. Yes. Looking at uh, the, how we responded to the Garissa University it took yes. a lot of time. Yes. And looking at how we also responded uh, during the El Ade attack, we could say a little bit, we are a little bit slow when it comes to fast responding to some of the, uh, of the attacks that we've had. Yes. What is the center doing to ensure that now it's quite snappy such that in case of anything, in, even if it's an advisory, we act and act right. Because some families argue, if at all there was a warning, th this thing should not have happened. Uh, sure, of course, uh, we, we are not 100% in this response. Mm -hmm. uh, as a center, we have tools that we are using 
to ensure that the coordinated effort uh, is uh, is not perfect but as good as it can be mm -hmm. uh, for example we have what we called act mm -hmm. and act is action counters terrorism so these are tools that we use to to highlight issues of terror mm -hmm. and we we speak to members of the society men members of the county security intelligence committees on what actions they can do to counter uh, terrorism mm -hmm. we have another tool it's called radar radar is r a d a r mm -hmm. it's a risk assessment uh, decision making tool so of course when we get the warnings and we have persons of interest we use this radar to see how committed uh, the person of interest is in uh, in in issues of terrorism mm -hmm. and of course again we also see uh, you might have an accused person or a person of interest and you want to exonerate them from that act of terror they could have been a taxi driver who was innocently uh, just doing his job but mm -hmm. happened to carry some terrorists along doing his job so we use this tool to also exonerate such such person so again we do what we call city seco mm. city seco is counterterrorism security coordination and this is for big events uh, this one we do uh, assessment uh, for an event prior during and after the event we also do uh, security assessment for institutions mm -hmm. we can do security assessment for kbc as an institution mm -hmm. We have done security assessment for most of our universities. Mm -hmm. We have done uh, security assessment for our ports, mm -hmm. our airports, and other uh, would be targets for, for terror attacks. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot we have done, and also the sensitization yes. that we do alongside using these tools. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot we have done since DUCIT, mm -hmm. and uh, we can pride ourselves uh, we have our inputs and we are seeing our outcomes and of course uh, what the the safety that the Kenyans are enjoying mm -hmm. yes so at least uh, we, we can comfortably say at least we we as a center we have at least achieved uh, something since its establishment in uh, combating uh, the rapidly changing terror world yes 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 and if you <laughs> look at the legislation mm -hmm. the center was uh, is established by the prevention of terrorism act mm -hmm. and uh, we have a mandate in that uh, act and uh, this is what we have done before DUCIT and this is what we have done after DUCIT mm -hmm. so if you look at what we have done after DUCIT uh, it's really a lot and there are efforts that we continue mm -hmm. uh, coordinating and performing mm -hmm. to ensure that Kenya remains safe in terms of terrorism. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you've mentioned something uh, you've done, uh, um, uh, is it risk assessment? For, yeah, for security, security risk assessment, assessment yes. For even universities. Yes, yes. And universities are emerging as uh, very, very fertile grounds for radicalization. Yes. And we have seen even uh, in some of the attacks, yes. uh, some being students of the university. And they can blend very well as learners but they are terrorists how yes. are you combating that and especially radicalization in uh, in the border in the border border counties including mombasa and uh, lam where the cases seem to be a little bit higher yeah uh, 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 as i said earlier we have uh, uh, the the th the threat levels that we have uh, uh, we look at counties differently. Mm -hmm. Every county has their priority. Uh, so if we go to the, the county action plans, mm -hmm. there is what that county prioritizes. Uh, maybe I'll speak uh, a bit on the national, national uh, strategic uh, plan on the countering violent extremism. So it's called the NSCV. Mm -hmm. So the NSCV has what we call the strategic end goals, mm -hmm. it has the strategic priorities mm -hmm. and it has the strategic pillars. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the pillars, we have political pillar, we have the security pillar, we have uh, the education pillar, mm -hmm. we have the gender pillar, the role of women and men and mm -hmm. children in terms of countering terrorism. Mm -hmm. We have the psychosocial pillar, the ideological pillar. So we have about nine pillars eh? and we are also looking at the victims of terrorism mm -hmm. 
what happens to a mother of a terrorist when the terrorist is no longer there, mm. when the terrorist is jailed? What can we learn from the mother? What are these telltale signs that we can pick uh, from these victims? So uh, alongside doing the, the security assessment, mm. we also sensitize on issues of radicalization into violent extremism, mm. who are the vulnerable groups, mm -hmm. and uh, in the universities, uh, we form those uh, CT champions mm -hmm. so that they can be able to pick up these early warnings and then we can have the early interventions uh, in such. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it might not be in the public domain, but through that sensitization, we are able to pick uh, elements of terror and we are able to, to contain them mm -hmm. in our institutions of learning. Mm -hmm. In the frontier counties, we have concerted efforts uh, the multi-pronged approach, mm -hmm. the whole of society, the whole of government. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you said, the president said security begins with you and me. Mm -hmm. So we want to build that resilience from the societal point of view mm -hmm. so that the enforcement agencies, these people live within us. Mm -hmm. So if we get the information from the society, then we as enforcement agencies, we are able to perform our duty perfectly. Okay. Yes. And looking at um, a technology, it has changed uh, the whole world. Yes. And of course, uh, terrorists are using the same same technology yes. to further their, their cause. Yes. And uh, looking at uh, propaganda that they usually use on social media, yes. on, uh, on their websites, on their Facebook pages, how as a center are you able to perceive that threat and uh, able to to neutralize it before it gets out of hand. We've seen Al-Qaeda using social media, we've yes. seen Al-Shabaab doing the same, we've seen the Taliban back if, since when the technology started. Yes. They have been using technology and social media to yes. further their, their agenda. So uh, again, uh, the national uh, strategy on countering violent extremism, mm -hmm. we have a pillar on media and online. Okay. And in that uh, platform of media and online, we bring the media players and also we are aware and we appreciate uh, the strength of social media. Mm -hmm. uh, the strength of social media in terms of it can be an advantage and a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. The world has become a very small village. Mm -hmm. uh, the Al-Qaeda will use the platform to air their narratives, uh, to air their incidents, trying to encourage people to join them, to recruit them, to radicalize them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we have platforms where we follow uh, the social media. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, for the mainstream media, I'm, aware, I'm sure you are aware that we have done training for media personnel mm -hmm. on how to report on cases of terrorism. That is true. So that you don't seem to be encouraging people to join terror groups, but you are reporting against uh, the terror groups. So media and online is really a challenge. If you look at the COVID uh, uh, period, mm -hmm. uh, where schools were closed mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we were learning online, mm -hmm. so we had to come up with strategies of what are our children consuming online. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the ones who have put the Wi-Fi in our homes mm -hmm. and our children are busy at home. So what yes. are they consuming online? Mm -hmm. Are they consuming uh, violent extremist materials? Mm -hmm. And if we get these mat materials, what do we do? Do we delete it? Do we give counter narratives because we know there are those narratives that they are given uh, by the radicalizers and the recruiters? So we are doing efforts on counter narratives, uh, of course, deleting this material from online when we access it, and also uh, keeping up uh, or with, with, with the times, mm -hmm. because we know if you don't keep with the times, you'll be left behind. Mm -hmm. We have the citizen uh, mechanism support mm -hmm. uh, in our center. Mm -hmm. uh, the citizen mechanism support also on a day-to-day -day basis. They are online looking at trends, what is happening, mm -hmm. what is being done online, uh, mm -hmm. so that we can have those intervention measures that can really enable us to, to check on the social media. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, looking at um, uh, at uh, what we've uh, gone through, I remember the head of state, President Uhuru Kenyatta, did talk about security begins with you and me. Yes. 
and uh, earlier on I remember we were we were having a conversation with you there where when you get home drunk at 2 in the a.m. Uh, the neighbor will be like uh, eh hey, alifika sana nsiku eh but when uh, uh, thugs come and steal your things and yes. he's asked did you hear anything <laughs> or anything? It, uh, apparently it is so becomes that um, uh, the neighbor never had anything yes. the same way that uh, the terrorists themselves you cannot look at me and say yeah he looks like a terrorist yeah yes. they live among us yes. and telling people reporting this or people giving out information that they know about this person yes they kind of a lot of people shy from that and that breeds grounds yes for this terrorism as a center how do you ensure that uh, people are able to come out and talk about uh, security and talk about this person is uh, is my neighbor but i'm not quite comfortable with the, some of the things he's doing yes. How do you, how do you inc include that as well? Uh, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, we had discussed about the Lamu issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the center is doing through mm -hmm. the sensitization, mm -hmm. we are trying to encourage uh, a resilience theme. Mm -hmm. See something, say something. Mm -hmm. Don't just report your neighbor for coming home drunk at night. Yes. Uh, report also what happens in terms of of security mm -hmm. because you you're the ones who see mm -hmm. and when you see you say something mm -hmm. of course there's a perception that uh, uh, the the police or the enforcement agencies will not be very positive mm -hmm. or will not take up that issue very positively mm -hmm. and of, we know of the police reforms that are ongoing and the perceptions that we ch want to change with the reforms mm -hmm. and all that so we actually know these people live among us. Mm -hmm. uh, they have gone to Somalia, for example. Mm -hmm. The proximity of Lamu and Somalia uh, makes it very easy to infiltrate mm -hmm. the county of Lamu. The returnees who are there are members of the, of the society. So when we are creating awareness and sensitizing members of the public on issues of radicalization and these telltale signs, mm -hmm. we actually tell them, uh, this person was available some time ago. Three months, you've not seen this person. Mm -hmm. The person is, is back. He has a certain behavior. Would you report that to a chief? Would you report that to an assistant county commissioner? Mm -hmm. Would you report that to the village elder who will scale it up to the enforcement agencies? Mm -hmm. And that is what we are trying to encourage. Mm -hmm. That if you see these telltale signs, we know there are the stereotypes who will see a beard like mine and say that I look like a terrorist. Yes, yes. But we have seen people without beards who are terrorists. Yes. And we are trying to demystify that issue of stereotyping. Mm -hmm. uh, the face of terrorism, we are seeing terrorists from Busia, from Mumias, mm -hmm. from Kakabega, you see? So uh, it cuts across. Terrorists are coming from Nyeri. So it cuts across and uh, uh, without stereotyping, there is what we are looking at. Mm -hmm. So that a neighbor will say that this neighbor of mine is behaving fishily. I think he's acquiring uh, mm -hmm. terror materials. I think his behavior is leading towards uh, something that is not good. Mm -hmm. Then we take it up. So we're encouraging that if you see something, you say something. And it is better that you see something and say something, we investigate and find out that there was nothing. Mm -hmm. Other than you seeing something and not saying something, yes. and then later something happens and you start saying, oh, I had seen this, I had seen this. Mm -hmm. So it, it really becomes a challenge. So we are trying to encourage the, the society to be patriotic mm -hmm. and to be as resilient as possible. And when they see something, they say something. Indeed. Yes. In case you just joined us, you're watching KBC News Check. And on this hour, we are looking or focusing on war, war on terror. And, uh, of course, three days from now, we'll be commemorating three days since the Ducit D D2 attack at Riverside Drive. And now we are joined by yet another panelist uh, who is uh, uh, Kevin Osido. Kevin Osido, karibu sana. Asante ni meshkuru. Yeah, karibu sana. We, we had already started. Yes, yes, yes. And I've been listening to the interesting conversation. Very good. I'm sorry for being late. You know, as uh, Mr. Masisi mentioned, we have the county engagement forum meeting as we speak. Yes. And so I passed through there and because these are, we have the county commissioner of Nairobi, the deputy county commissioners, and the 
different multi stakeholders uh, of the community are also there uh -huh. to basically look at the public participation process of the bill uh -huh. of Nairobi County to prevent and counter violent extremism. Actually, that is where we got to start it, but let me All introduce right. you officially. Kevin Osido he is the executive director of County Governance Watch. He, you, he will tell us exactly what they look at, but looking at what uh, actually Masisi has talked about is that you are seeing violent uh, extremism and also radicalization in counties. We, we, we were formerly knew that uh, the, the counties bordering perhaps Somalia or some, something, they had that issue, but that issue is creeping up even in other counties. Karibu sana, Wana Kevin. Asante. Can you tell us what you do at County So Governance at Watch? County Governance Watch, as the name suggests, we watch over county governments mm -hmm. on how they, of course, are using the taxpayers' money, mm -hmm. aspects to do with public participation and uh, citizen engagement in governance uh, affairs, mm -hmm. aspects of legal and, and uh, policy frameworks that support Schedule 4 functions of the county governments in so far as uh, running of the county affairs are concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite actually since 2015, post West attack, we have been engaging on these aspects of uh, peace and security, mm -hmm. but much more um, instrumentally looking at how citizens are getting involved in making their societies and their communities uh, secure. And so we have a, a big program mm -hmm. called the Defend My Future campaign, which is a campaign that is rallying uh, the citizens of the Republic of Kenya, friends and uh, partners to be able to safeguard our communities and yeah. therefore, you know, like Mr. Masisi said, see something, say something. Mm -hmm. And so we've been working with the center on this, the National Counterterrorism Center on this particular program mm -hmm. to be able to build the capacity of citizens and even uh, law enforcement agencies mm -hmm. to be able to also have a positive attitude towards the community. You know, one of the challenges that we have had with security aspects is especially is about reporting, mm -hmm. where you walk into a police station and the, the, you, are, you are told you are the first suspect of a case yes. or a report which you went to levy. So we've been working with different security agencies and also law enforcement uh, organs on this particular program just to make it easy for citizens to engage in security and also for the security agencies to be able to be much more proactive in picking uh, these reports and also providing feedback. So that's really what County Governance Watch does and we have uh, what we call the County Governance Index, mm -hmm. therefore that assesses levels of performance of counties mm -hmm. in all the the functions that are devolved by the constitution in schedule 4 mm -hmm. so that is water agriculture health education infrastructure and also how counties are uh, basically mainstreaming uh, aspects that that safeguard our patriotism so that for example if it is a county public service board mm -hmm. how are they hiring people do they does the governor and his team only pick people from one community and how does that therefore entrench aspects of uh, uh, cohesion mm -hmm. and integration of our communities in the government indeed and it's a good thing that you've mentioned that um, you uh, you're talking about the future you cannot talk about the future when you're not talking about the youth and the youth are uh, uh, are on the receiving hand when it comes to come comes to things like radicalization yeah. and especially in counties and the county watch yeah and the high unemployment levels are pushing the youths towards violent extremism yeah Quite as a county true. watch and you have you've talked about the forum itself yeah uh, how are we supposed to deal with this so that we may ensure that uh, our youths do not fall into that prey? So three things that we have seen happening. One of the things is, of course, government affirmative action programs. Mm -hmm. And if you talk about uh, unemployment levels or poverty levels mm -hmm. uh, in our country, mm -hmm. the, the, the segment of population that is worst hit is indeed, as you rightfully said, the youth. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, is that government has come up with uh, almost 11 different uh, affirmative action programs. Uh, most mm -hmm. of them are aimed at you know safeguarding or giving the youth a safe space mm -hmm. to be able to either uh, have your capacity built if you're already in business or you're an entrepreneur that is doing very well but you have gaps that could probably be related to things like aspects like value addition or finding market for your goods so government already has agencies mm -hmm. you know that are supposed to engage with young people so what we are doing at county governance watch mm -hmm. is to provide linkages Mm -hmm. Where, for instance, we uh, identify this, we identify these young people, these groups, and we write letters and use the kind of networks that we have, such as the National Counterterrorism Center, the State Department of Youth Affairs, among several other uh, government, uh, both national and county government uh, organs, mm -hmm. to be able to provide those linkages. The second thing mm -hmm. is to undertake assessment of uptake 
of this affirmative action program so that for instance how much does uh, a county like Kiambu mm. or a county like Mandera or Lamu have for young people who are at risk and how has government made it easy for them to be able to access and you know a youth at risk and a youth who would want to probably take advantage of that unemployment situation mm. if you look at their lifestyles and the, some of the tools that Mr. Masisi was, was mentioning and you begin to assess their lifestyles a lot of these people are not people who will show up in, 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 in a nicely dressed suit like myself mm. so most of them are people who probably have given up you know they are hopeless and they imagine that nothing good can come from you know uh, from them mm -hmm. and uh, some of them probably don't even have national id cards so if you look at some of the requirements that mm -hmm. government has put in place mm -hmm. for them to be able to submit to benefit from some of these affirmative action funds mm -hmm. then most of these young people who are at risk then are left out mm -hmm. so what we have done with the particularly engagement with the state department of youth affairs is to try and work with the, the ceus and the fund managers of these funds to see how the government can be able to give them a cup off so that some of the requirements are either lessened and made easy for them so that it is exciting for these young people to begin to apply or gain interest you know in in the in application of some of these funds the third thing is of course to look at what we call the police and legislation angle which is therefore to look at does the government both national and county have policies that will give strength to the youth mm -hmm. to be able to see value in why it is important for them to be involved so that they either create jobs or get involved in th those job creation mechanisms. So what we have done as an organization is to work with through the Council of Governors, what we call the development of county youth action plans, mm -hmm. which really look at the context of that young individual. What is, what is the best thing that you can do within your county? And so has the county government put in place a mechanism to safeguard what you want to do? So that, for instance, if you go to Kisi and there is a lot of soapstone carving, mm -hmm has the county assembly passed a law that would also lead towards on source revenue mm -hmm. by supporting that soapstone carving uh, artisan rework that the youth are doing mm -hmm. has the social development officer you know help them to register so mm -hmm. that they are able to benefit from some of these funds because one of the requirements is that you are actually registered by the government and so without that registration it becomes difficult for you to benefit and that benefit so that you deal with of unemployment and, and encouraging these young people to not just look at government as an employment agency mm -hmm. but also looking at how they can be able to on their own volition mm -hmm. come up with mechanisms and methods of you know um, uh, creating employment we do the fourth thing which is working with government agencies mm -hmm. to build the capacity mm -hmm. of these young people and we have had very many forums including just yesterday when we convened about 384 young people okay. of uh, Kasarani sub county of Nairobi mm -hmm. to be able to look at the opportunities within the sub county and how they can be able to benefit and not, not necessarily look at government as uh, the place to get employment. And definitely, of course, uh, we are, you are keeping the youths away from uh, violent extremism Precisely. and radicalization. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Masisi, grief, pain, um, regrets uh, characterize victims and families of people who have uh, undergone perhaps a, a, a terror, terror attack. Yes. As a center, do you offer psychosocial support to these people who are victims? Yes. Uh, as I said, maybe I touch on what uh, Osido has just said about the push and pull factors. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, many people who are radicalized or recruited into terror groups, they have grievances. So these grievances are brought about by the push and pull factors. Mm -hmm. uh, the poverty, education, marginalization, those geopolitics issues. Mm -hmm. So the government is really doing a lot to, to address this these issues, mm -hmm. like issues of uh, free education, issues of Kazi uh, Kwa You know, they come up with initiatives that try to keep the youth busy mm -hmm. and also engaged, uh, whether it's money-wise or through activities, mm -hmm. so that uh, they, they are kept devoid of violent extremists. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when we look at uh, what uh, the, the center is doing, mm -hmm. uh, the pillar for psychosocial pillar really addresses uh, many a times. Uh, if 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 I if I give you an example of a suspect and a victim, mm -hmm. who is many a times given uh, more focus 
It is the it's suspect. Actually, the suspect. <laughs> they'll be given transport. Yes. They'll be given food in their cells. Security. You know. tight so security. what happens to to the victim? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that uh, the the victims of terror, those who have been hurt, uh, those who 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 have lost children to to terror uh, activities, what do we do with them? So we counsel them, we engage them in forums, and we talk to them. We learn from them. Mm -hmm. What did you see with your child? How did you know they went to Somalia or something? Others will come and say, yes, I think my child is in Somalia. Why do you think your child is in Somalia? This is the way they were behaving. So we take up that and we try and sensitize that if this victim would see this in their child, uh, would it be a lesson that would like to, to give to other parents so that they can also have those early warnings to, to tell on what to do. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, psychosocial support that we give at the center and also trying to bring them on board uh, because again we know uh, youths uh, radicalize each other. Yes. A brother will ra radicalize a brother. Mm -hmm. So if you have lost your brother uh, through terror, what is the likelihood that you also join a terror group. Mm. So we also keep abreast with what is happening with that family mm. so that at least we can build the resilience and also uh, make them see life on the better side. Mm. Yes. Uh, gentlemen, and this is something that always comes up when we have an attack on patriotism and nationalism because it is alleged that mostly people know who these people are because they live among us. And in counties, it's quite simple because now we are seeing different counties, uh, people from, as um, Masisi has talked about, from uh, Western, from uh, Lower Eastern, as a county watch. What is the level of radicalization that you have seen, and especially in counties? And how yeah. are you working with the counterterrorism center to ensure that these youths there are some who come out and say, I was in Somalia, I was radicalized. How do you help these people? And how can we help them? Yeah, Perhaps Masisi will, will chip in with that, um, we'll add on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, we have uh, done and continue to do with the support of uh, mm -hmm. and capacity building mechanisms from, the, uh, from NCTC mm -hmm. is of course the creation of safe spaces. Mm -hmm. And these safe spaces are not, uh, from our way of looking at it, is not a place where maybe you will see very high level security intervention. It's purely mm -hmm. maybe a, a Boda Boda network, you know, a women group somewhere, a, a, youth, a youth center, like what county governments are today doing, where uh, you know, counties are putting together social halls mm -hmm. where young people can walk in and it's more or less like a one-stop shop where you can just go in and, 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 and sit and ventilate or get somebody to talk to, particularly through the, the psychosocial issues. And uh, the county action plans, which Mr. Masisi also spoke about, have really been quite um, a platform where we, th that we have seen young people now taking advantage of and you know just uh, for or because of the fact that it it brings security agencies closer to the people because these are uh, you know security officers who sit with communities to discuss their security and uh, you know um, peace uh, mechanisms or peace building mechanisms and how this this citizens or young people can be able to also participate without necessarily looking at security as something that is only left for the government mm -hmm. and so from our um, and interventions, as I mentioned earlier on, is to look at the policies that have been put in place by, by the counties. And as we speak, the Council of Governors mm -hmm. has also been, is also one of the agencies that we have worked with very closely and through their security committee that is led by the governor of Tana River, mm -hmm. we have had very deep-seated conversations around how these national government uh, programs that are being in, uh, managed by State Department of Youth Affairs mm -hmm. can also be devolved. And you know, when you talk about that, it's difficult to say that there is national government youth and county government youth. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the cross-border interventions of county of counties, and particularly looking at the regional blocks, uh, like Jumeirah County, Zapuani, Lake Region Economic Block, yes. the counties have unique features that mm -hmm. therefore feed into, into each other. And so we have asked county governments through their uh, departments of, of youth and education mm -hmm. to look at those common features, therefore that can be able to excite young people to not look at Nairobi 
Nairobi as the best as the best place to go to or look at uh, Mandera as a exit route towards you know uh, radicalization and then coming back to attack people mm -hmm. but to look at how can you be able to add value within your county government even if there is nothing that you think uh, is coming out of that county and we have seen quite a number of young people now uh, thinking beyond you know what the government can be able to do to mm -hmm. look at what is it that I can be able to do and what are the opportunities that exist within our county governments. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of it is that uh, through the offices of the governors, they have also uh, put in place th uh, on the budget some funds, which is more or less, it looks like an affirmative fund, but is purely left for young people who feel so vulnerable. And how we have seen counties mm -hmm. creating or taking advantage of the safe spaces I was talking about is through sporting activities, mm -hmm. where I, in many counties they have uh, months or days when they have just set it aside for sporting activities. Mm -hmm. And so as, as civil society organizations, we take advantage of those platforms and move in there and invite NCTC for public uh, uh, awareness uh, sessions, mm -hmm. invite the county commissioners for security briefing sessions, and sometimes even prisons, because some of these young people are people who have been to the prison and back. And so, uh, Kevin, do, do the young people know that this program do exist? Because at the end of the day, they are geared or they are focused on the youths, and especially you've talked about the most vulnerable. Yeah. Do they know that these projects are there, and especially in the counties? Yes. Uh, through awareness, mm -hmm. uh, of course, I know that uh, convincing them to see the value and, uh, you know, uh, basically the benefit right now, like instant coffee mm -hmm. gratification becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. It has to be different and it has to be seen differently by youth from being given 50 shillings or 1,000 shillings to gratify your uh, you know, you, you are right now need. Mm -hmm. But through the interventions that are constant and uh, the kind of networks that the, the young people have, have organized, because that is how we help them to benefit from some of these uh, from some of these interventions by the government. So I will say mm -hmm. that, yes, the young people know, but if you look at their interests mm -hmm. and the, the desire, which is really about how can I benefit from what you are doing now, yes. the waiting period then becomes a challenge because mm -hmm. most of them are looking for my immediate benefit as opposed to working towards the system mm -hmm. to be able to benefit maybe at a later stage. But oh. uh, how the center has been able to work with us in this particular aspect is, of course, uh, through coming forward to be present, uh, build the capacity of young people. Mm -hmm. Mr. Masisi and Mr. Njenga and the others have mm -hmm. taken us through the ra radicalization process, mm -hmm. the terrorist planning circle. And so that knowledge and information really becomes very critical. And that is how we use the safe spaces to be able to also infuse the knowledge around uh, prevention of violent extremism and radicalization. But Masisi, how do we help you that... <coughs> come out and say that uh, I remember there's an incident where some youths went to Somalia, they were radicalized they were promised, that, I don't know, I think a thousand dollars per month, mm. but the money was not forthcoming, or the parks were not there, so they decided to come back yeah, how do we help such kind of a person uh, because uh, we need to reintegrate this person back into the society sure. but that person is not the person that left Kenya, went to Somalia was radicalized and came back yes. mm. how do we help that person? And especially the young people. Yeah. So as a government, uh, the, the national strategy on countering violent extremism has a priority on delegitimizing and rejecting all efforts of violent extremism. Mm -hmm. So as a center, when we face these returnees, because we refer to them as returnees, mm -hmm. we have a program, it's called DDRR. DDRR stands for disengagement, deradicalization, uh, rehabilitation and reintegration. Mm -hmm. So number one, we disengage. So what, how do we disengage? We yes. disengage you physically. We disengage you in terms of contact. So that, because you know, the more you contact them, the more they will radicalize you and give you an ideology that you need to actualize. Mm -hmm. I'm so, not under custody at the moment, <laughs> right? You no, know, you're not. Okay. So when we disengage, <laughs> uh, we disengage you physically and contact twice. Mm -hmm. Then we, we de-radicalize you. Mm -hmm. So we, we have the ideological pillar uh, that you are calling interfaith. Mm -hmm. So we bring in the specialists who are the sheikhs, the mm -hmm. imams, who actually know what the Quran is speaking about, mm -hmm. uh, what are the true narratives that these young men need to know. So the, with the intervention of the Imams, we de-radicalize these youth. They are told the truth about their faith mm -hmm. and what they are supposed to do about their faith. Then now we rehabilitate them. They have been there. <coughs> Excuse me. So they have 
probably been involved in terror fighting uh, and now coming back to Kenya too to maybe perform a terrorist attack mm -hmm. but then they see that no this is actually not my calling mm -hmm. I need to go back to who I was so we rehabilitate them back to the normal state of a person mm -hmm. uh, so we have agencies we have partners CSOs uh, who come in and uh, try and rehabilitate uh, these young people then now we reintegrate them back to the society mm -hmm. so how do we reintegrate them back to the society uh, you can go back to school mm -hmm. get a KCSC certificate get your degree certificate diploma certificate what do you want to do I want to start a car wash I want to start a border border I want to start a business mm -hmm. so we have those support mechanisms mm -hmm. that we help this youth uh, come back to the society mm -hmm. uh, it is a risky affair it is a dangerous and yeah. risky affair because mm -hmm. As government, as we are disengaging, de-radicalizing and rehabilitating mm -hmm. them, the terror groups are also following them mm -hmm. so that they can go back to the cause for, for, the, for the terror group. So we really have to be very careful when we are disengaging, de-radicalizing, rehabilitating and reintegrating this youth. Mm -hmm. And again, we um, have seen scenarios where, yes, the youth have come up, uh, they, they say they were in Somalia. Mm -hmm. We don't have the empirical data that this youth were in Somalia. The, uh, a certain organization comes up, mm -hmm. gives them uh, border borders, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you find many other youth coming up and saying, oh, even us, we were in Somalia, which is not true. <laughs> so we also have to verify. Yeah. I thought they would be afraid that they would be arrested. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, they are, they are seeing the incentive uh -huh. and uh, yeah, okay. this, okay, the uh, this, yes, yeah. these returnees are getting. Uh -huh. and, and again, this program, uh, we, we take it to the enforcement agencies because mm -hmm. how does a special operation officer in Wajia, mm -hmm. in Lamu, when they see a youth returning in full Al-Shabaab gear, mm -hmm. how do they react? The first reaction will be, Shoot. maybe to shoot this mm -hmm. this young man this young person mm -hmm. but through that program then they can see this this person has surrendered this person is 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 the one who is giving himself up mm -hmm. so there, there must be something so that they, when we take them up we are able to get more information mm -hmm. we are able to know who radicalized them who re, who recruited them and so the program really uh, works well uh, with, with the returnees. Indeed. Uh, have you witnessed uh, the same problem? Because the program yeah. that uh, he's talking about is uh, more or less like the way a person is released from jail and now is yes. rehabilitated into, yeah. the, into the society. Have you, have you worked with the same uh, program? We have witnessed uh, those kind of uh, uh, interventions mm -hmm. and in fact that's why initially I mentioned the aspect of, of um, uh, affirmative action yes because there's just this much that government can be able to do mm -hmm. and as I mentioned there are also young people that uh, in their get uh, getting back to be reintegrated they don't probably want to be identified so what we have seen happening is how to therefore amalgamate them into ongoing programs mm -hmm. like car wash businesses the border border networks things that then give them the opportunity to also feel like they are accepted appreciated back and uh, what Mr. Masisi has mentioned has been quite fundamental especially from Nairobi County and we have seen the assistant county commissioners the deputy county commissioners basically the county security intelligence committee being very critical mm -hmm. in terms of you know being the first person or the first people to receive uh, some of these young people because uh, the uh, aspect of security then scares them even away from the community and in the event that they want to get back even those who are from prisons mm -hmm. one of the things that we have done and keep doing is to uh, organize common events like mm -hmm. i mentioned the soccer plays yeah. and we have had a number of them and even other organizations that are also part of the county engagement forum organizing soccer events that bring together these some of these youth uh, that have been uh, either brought back to the community mm -hmm. and they want to feel accepted 
playing together with policemen and mm -hmm. you see after that event we have conversations and that's how we have also been able to see uh, the de-escalation of a number of terror attacks even yes. in Nairobi because yes. now there's a lot of sharing of information mm -hmm. people are beginning to say I saw this happening what does mm -hmm. it mean and even from capacity building aspect that NCTC does with mm -hmm. uh, most of us is to be able to also empower them with information that yeah. if you see this kind of thing it mm -hmm. means this if you have a friend or a neighbor who is behaving this way begin to you know uh, be f uh, report to the nearest police station and if you go to the police station this is how you make your report mm -hmm. and we have even had sessions where we help them understand what the OB number means of so the, the how it is done mm -hmm. and, and basically the implications of those kind of reports and uh, uh, it's it's been quite positive in terms of attitude change mm -hmm. acceptance by these young people and then also attitude change from uh, the security agencies and so we have seen a lot of you know joint sharing and common engagement between security agencies the youth groups and most a lot of this has been successful through unconventional means like uh, car wash sessions mm -hmm. you could be a county a deputy county commissioner who takes off your official uniform you drive your car into a car wash just like any other person and you begin a conversation and we have seen uh, those kind of uh, you know attitude uh, elements really being quite instrumental in dealing with the war on terror in Nairobi uh, and because of the interest of time we need to pick up pace uh, looking at um, what um, uh, Kevin has talked about is that of course we are enjoying quite um, uh, uh, quite a secure environment so to speak yes. but looking at some places like Lamu we've had uh, sporadic attacks several times and uh, the insurgents just uh, slip back to Somalia why is it uh, that we cannot decide that we have to sort that, that problem out just like we did for Mashifta back in the 80s and the 90s. Why is it that that always comes out? I know it, it, it's a security question but <laughs> the, 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 the Lamu corridor yes. and the northern frontier yes. we seem to be having an issue there. Other counties we are enjoying relative calm. Uh, there, there, there are many concerted efforts by the government to ensure that the frontier counties, uh, Lamu, Wajia, Mandera, Garissa, uh, remain safe. Uh, what we have to appreciate is that terrorism is here with us. And uh, it is a menace that we have to deal with. Uh, it is a day-to-day -day activity. For, for the government to deal with issues of terrorism because we have to protect our citizens and mm -hmm. our friends who are in Kenya. And uh, there are efforts, uh, and uh, as we'll say, there's the soft approach and there's the hard approach. Mm -hmm. So the hard approach, the soft approach will not work without the hard approach. The hard, hard approach will not work without the soft, the soft approach. approach. So the hard approach is uh, the tactical the techniques that I that that I use, the, the procedures which are used. Uh, so there is a lot that is being done in these uh, frontier counties by the enforcement agencies, mm -hmm. and also uh, by us as NCTC, going there, talking with the youth, talking with the imams. The the imams also tell on each other. They see that uh, whatever is preaching is, is I think is not right. He has a small group that he calls after. The, 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 Prayer. the prayers mm -hmm. so what is he telling this small group so they tell on each other and, and this is something that we pride of because uh, the more we talk and uh, the more we create awareness mm -hmm. uh, along those frontier counties the more we create uh, resilience the proximity to Somalia again as I said mm -hmm. makes it easy for those who are there to, to infiltrate mm -hmm. uh, we know of the transnational um, uh, migration mm -hmm. uh, with the with the help of the national coordination mechanism uh, we, we, we are able to to tell that uh, okay these are Kenyans mm -hmm. so they'll they'll go to Somali where they have a relative and come back to Kenya where they have a relative mm -hmm. so how do you pick that the intention they went uh, to do there was was actually a terror thing or, or not. Mm -hmm. So without really creating this awareness mm -hmm. among those communities that are there, then uh, we will be failing in our efforts. Mm -hmm. But we are doing that. The returnees, uh, 
the element of returnees in in, in Lamu is also another in, is another issue. Yeah. So how does the neighbor tell that this is a returnee? Maybe they have come uh, in the cell that we call the sleeper cell. Mm. So they are just waiting mm -hmm. for activation. Yeah. So if this person is waiting for activation, well, how are they behaving? And how would uh, a neighbor of goodwill tell mm. that this person, I think this person, the behavior is not right. Mm -hmm. So we are really doing so much effort in, in those uh, uh, frontier counties and uh, we, are, we are winning, we are winning. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we thank the society for what they are doing. The reports that we get on a day-to-day -day basis, they are mm -hmm. really helping us in ensuring that we fulfill our mandate. Indeed. Yes. And uh, we are taking a quick uh, commercial break and then we will be back to wrap this up. Uh, of course, I'm joined by Senior Superintendent of Police, uh, who is Masisi Mulili, uh, Kilu, sorry, uh, Kilu, and Kevin Osido, who is the Executive uh, Director uh, for the County Governance Watch. Of course, counties being being on the forefront to ensure that our youths uh, do not plunge into, into terrorism or be radicalized. We'll be back after this break. You've had your cartel wars, but you've never had global deals in violence. <laughs> Lina de la Renta. Contra. Up and over? Wow! Wiki hii kwenye mkulima tutazingatia ufugaji wa kuku wa kienyeji improved Kuku it's effortless Kisha tufuge ngombe wa maziwa mjini Huku ni Nairobi Yes, na hakuna shamba. That is the biggest challenge we have. So the only thing we do, na utilize ile space kidogo iko because the government is unapata ina to encourage. Basi usikose kujiunga na si Jumapili saa tisa unusu kwa mseto kamili wa kilimo. Hapa KBC Channel 1. Log on to the KBC website at www.kbc.co.ke to get the latest breaking news, entertainment, sports, politics, lifestyle or business trends from Kenya and around the world. Never miss new episodes from your favorite TV shows, reruns and movies. Just stream online or watch live on your YouTube channel at KBC Channel 1 TV shows for the day's biggest stories. Trustworthy news and family entertainment. Log on to KBC Channel 1. Watch what you want anytime, anywhere.
Welcome back to KBC News Check and let's now wrap it up on war on terrorism. As I had alluded to earlier, we have Senior Superintendent of Police and he is also the Principal Liaison Officer at the National Counterterrorism Centre and uh, we also have the Executive Director for the County Governance Watch. Uh, gentlemen, yes. in a minute each, uh, in your bio you've talked about you want to change, of course, uh, Kenya and the world if you give an opportunity. In your own words, how yes. are you going to change that? And do you believe and do you think that we are winning the war on terrorism? In a minute. Yes, uh, I believe we are winning the war on terrorism. Uh, the government is doing really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe doing good in where uh, I work from. Mm -hmm. So as NCTC, we, we have the efforts that we are doing and uh, we really loud uh, the, the support that we get at the center. Mm -hmm. uh, so the change I would like to have is uh, ensure that there is security uh, in Kenya and beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, having been born and bred in the Eastlands, mm -hmm. uh, we always tell that uh, where you come from does not have to determine what you become. That's true. So you become a true agent, you become a good example, and uh, uh, other the youth and other like-minded people can ape what I'm, I'm doing. Uh -huh. So. I believe I can be a true change and I can be an influencer mm -hmm. of change. And the war on mm -hmm. terrorism is on. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not sleeping. Mm -hmm. uh, we are being resilient. Mm -hmm. And I ask the larger society, if you see something, say something. And you're not vying for any position, are you? <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm not. not at the moment. <laughs> not, no, <I'm> not. <laughs> okay, uh, wrap it up, Kevin. Mine is basically what I normally say, PTTTK. Pamoja mm tuaweza. -hmm. To see Pamoja Toweza is basically the efforts of everybody. You yes. don't have to be a security officer, mm -hmm. you know, to defend Kenya's borders and to defend Kenyans and, you know, engage young people in anti radicalization, anti terrorism. Mm -hmm. And from the words of our national anthem, Tuwe Tayari Kuilinda, because mm -hmm. if we don't defend and protect our motherland, our country, yes. And the defending doesn't mean that you carry a gun. It doesn't mean that you're the one who is there to be, you know, at the mm -hmm. forefront of everything. Mm -hmm. It's purely about the little steps that we make every day when we wake up. What is my role? What is the role of my neighbor? What is the role of my community, my society? Mm -hmm. And each of us putting our hands on deck will be able to actually linda Nchietu ya Kenya. The war on terror, as Masisi says, is on. Mm -hmm. Kenya is leading. In mm -hmm. fact, the county action plans are a global phenomenon. Yeah. No other country in the whole globe as county action plans that domicile uh, anti-terrorism and prevention of violent extremism mm -hmm. at the one inch level. Meaning so we are on the right track. We are actually on the right track. And uh, for avoidance of doubt, uh, National Counterterrorism Center yes, is sir. the equivalent of CIA in the US or FBI or which <laughs> one is it? Or which one actually is almost the same, uh, the same work you're doing? Counterterrorism unit. Yeah, it's uh -huh. a CTU. 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 Yeah, it's a yeah. city unit. Yes. Ah, yes. okay. CTU. Okay, gentlemen, thank you so much, uh, Superintendent of Police, Senior Superintendent. Yes. Apologies yes. for yes. that, <laughs> of police, and uh, also yes. the principal uh, liaison office at the National Counterterrorism. Uh, center which works hand in hand uh, by the way you these two gentlemen know each other yeah. <laughs> from the, the work that uh, you are doing Go kevin ahead. osido sure. who is executive director of the county yeah. governance watch Asante. thank you so much for making time i oh, think so we should okay. have this conversation again so yes, that we may fortify what, yes. we, what we are actually the fruits that we are having